So in just two years, I've been able to grow my watch business from zero revenue to five million, and it's good, you know, it's, I'm still growing, and it's, it's a comfortable level, but in 2024 and beyond, I wanna take it to the next level. Why do I wanna do this? Well, um, you know, the money is obviously a, a bonus, but I don't think making more money at this point will make me happier. Um, but I do get a lot of fulfillment through doing this. In fact, I get more fulfillment uh, and more happiness doing this, growing my watch business, than anything I've ever done career-wise or hobby-wise. And I think that's a good thing because in this world, money accrues to people that do something that they enjoy and love and do it for a long time. Which leads me to my next point. I'm only two years in and that really is not a long time. <laughs> Instead of constantly thinking about the short term and the small things that need to be dealt with immediately, like buying this 2023 Batman full set, which is now for sale, I need to do better at looking at the bigger picture. For example, what I want in the next 10 years, 20 years, and so on and so on. There's this amazing quote, which is similar to what I said earlier. For living a life on your own terms, find something that you enjoy and just do that for decades. And I think this is genuinely the most simple yet powerful career and life advice you can receive. Do something you enjoy. If you, if you enjoy it, you'll become good at it. And if you do it for decades, there's just no way you won't become good at the thing you're doing. And I think using this principle and taking it into my business is a great way to help grow my business. And you may be wondering though, what if I don't know what I really enjoy? I won't be able to start a business. Well, whatever you do to begin with, you'll probably suck at it anyway. So, I mean, I, mean, I certainly did. Uh, you just have to do something. Doing nothing is a worse decision than doing something, no matter what it is. And you'll learn more by failing doing something you didn't like than doing nothing at all. For me, my plan is to keep building and stacking the years because I'll get better at all of this business stuff the more years I do. I also often think about knowing when to let go and what I mean by that is knowing when to do less uh, in my business and pass on and delegate responsibilities to other people. Um, because I've been doing this for two years now, you know, I've been a one-man band for a long time. Yes, I've had help with filming and editing certain things, but Largely, I've done this all myself. I have this completely irrational fear that only I know how to do things in my business and only I can do things the best way. Um, which is completely not true, right? It's just absolutely stupid. And the logical and rational part of me knows that um, if I were to hire somebody else, that they would be way better at the thing that they came in to do because that would be their sole responsibility and over time they'd get amazing at it. I know this but it's still hard to let go. And I think being in this industry where, you know, valuable items are around every single day, someone I bring in has to be trustworthy. They have to be motivated to, to do well and to do as well as I would want, which is hard to find when they don't own any part of the business. But um, that is what I'm looking for. Um, and probably someone that understands and knows the watch industry as well. With the trustworthy thing, I'd have to put a lot of trust into somebody because now I've just bought two GMT Sprites and I'm picking up a Rose Gold Daytona. If I were to ask someone to help me do this, that is like, I don't know, 60 odd thousand pounds that I'm trusting someone to, you know, not lose or get stolen or whatever. So it's, um, it's a tricky one. And it doesn't mean that I should ignore this. Uh, it is front of mind. I do need to give it some real thought and I'm thinking it's, you know, possibly marketing, the social media stuff, maybe help with sales. Um, but yeah, leave a comment if you'd be interested to uh, join the business, I guess. <laughs> to know something interesting. I studied business at uni, okay? Not once was I taught how to start a business or to scale a business. So me wanting to go from 5 million revenue to 50 million revenue a year, well, I mean, I'm taking a shot in the dark at the moment, to be honest with you. And yeah, I don't want to be shooting in the dark. And so I think I might have to have someone help me turn that light on so that I can shoot and aim properly. Basically, what I'm saying here is a mentor might be really valuable to me. Someone who has already scaled a business or multiple businesses, and to be honest, yeah, I wouldn't mind if they liked watches. If they didn't, it's fine, but as long as they understood the logistics of what it's like to run a watch business, I think that would be absolutely fine. So yeah, I, I barely learned anything at university with regards to you know helping set up and grow a business. I did have a few conversations with people before I started my business though, which was very helpful and I appreciate that. Uh, but as soon as I started, you know, you, you just, I just had a thousand more questions. So 
um, I, I feel like at this point I've, I've been doing a lot on my own. Um, I, and I do get asked this question on a daily basis from people wanting to start a watch business, which is, how do I start a watch business? Well, to be honest, you've just got to start. Do what you can for a few months, and after a few months, you'll have way better questions to ask me. I'd rather answer five detailed questions about business from someone that has done stuff than answer one generic question from someone that has not actually done anything yet. Anyway, enough, of, <laughs> enough about me mentoring. Uh, I am going to seek mentorship. I just don't know where from. Um, if anyone watching genuinely believes that they could offer some help and support on scaling and you know 10xing my revenue, then please do get in touch. I'm not sure what will be in it for you other than maybe a nice chat and a cup of coffee, but uh, yeah, get in touch. Something that I'm often into minds about is whether or not I should get office space. Not a retail store, but office space that I can go to and work from. Instead of having this makeshift setup that I have at home, you know, should I have a place in central London <clears throat> where I work from? And, you know, I think a benefit of that would be, be a, a good place to meet clients, you know, appointment only kind of thing. Um, and I think the perception of me having an office space probably to you guys would seem better than just having, you know, a, a section of my living room as my office space. I don't know, uh, but what I do know is the cost of that, for example, you know, I could quite easily spend two, three thousand pounds a month, you know, spread that over 12 months, it's like 25, 30k a year, it's, it's a big cost. If I had to, you know, balance and weigh up the pros, the cons of having an office space, I don't think that there's any real need, I don't feel a desire to have that space, I'm fortunate that there is a place that I do use to meet clients and it's very nice and safe. So at present time, an office space doesn't seem like something I should be doing. Yeah, and if any of you guys know me fairly well, you'll know that I used to have a corporate job and the idea of going back to an office environment uh, is just not something that I'm running towards at the moment. Um, albeit, you know, it would be still my freedom, it would be my rules, I could go whenever I please, but I just don't think that the need of having that at the moment is is super bright, so I, I feel like I'm okay here for now, but then again I think like, but at some point I'm probably going to do it, same with a retail store, to grow and to scale where I want to get to, you know, 5 mil to 50 and 100 mil, I, I will have to do this, so it's kind of like, well, surely jumping now versus in a couple of years or next year, like, it would be better. I don't know. But then I do often have a conversation with future 80-year-old Phil, and what would he say to me now? He'd probably say, do you know what, younger Phil, there's, there's no rush right now. Take it easy, enjoy your uh, makeshift, you know, whatever you want to call this. Yeah, I don't know, it just, it just doesn't feel urgent yet, but, yeah. Uh, we'll see how things go. I think the main thing that will help me 10x my business will be by doing the following. Sell more watches. Obvious, right? Yeah, but let me unravel what I mean by this. I need to buy more watches. The more watches that I buy, the more watches that I sell. It's very simple maths. Someone I know said this, I can't remember who, but you can't sell a watch that you don't have, so I need to buy more watches. Pretty obvious. I also need to start doing bigger deals. Now that my business has grown and I have more money to buy more expensive watches, I think when the right opportunities are presented, I need to take more of those opportunities. This will increase revenue and with the higher revenue watches there's typically more profit to be made and thirdly I could also start selling more brands other than just Rolex AP and Patek 95% of my watches sold are Rolex about 3% Patek 2% AP I'm guessing but it's probably very accurate and being honest that's that's just because they're my bread and butter I know the most about these three brands and so I've just stuck with them but perhaps it's time to venture into other brands like Omega, Tudor, JLC, Breitling, etc, etc. I just don't know if as many people buy these brands. I'm sure they do, um, but to me right now they just don't seem to be as popular with the people that I speak to on a regular basis.